Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be discussing the sacraments of the Catholic Church, and today we're talking about baptism. We'll go over the question of other forms of baptism besides just water baptism. Are there any other forms, and what are they? There are actually two forms of baptism aside from water baptism, the baptism of desire and the baptism of blood. Now, before we get into this, I've heard people lodge arguments against the baptism of desire, saying that it's some kind of attempt to soften the church's teachings on who can get into heaven and what's actually required, and that it's been one of the reasons for the modern-day apostasy that we see all over the church, and I can't prove they're totally wrong. Sure, some people who want to soften church teaching may have tried to use this one as a shoehorn. And sure, some people who want to live in apostasy may have used this teaching to try to make excuses for themselves. But the problem is, that doesn't make the teaching wrong. However, I do think the baptism of desire teaching has been blown way out of proportion by some people. So, this is one of those teachings that really needs to be clarified. The baptism of desire is the sincere desire to be baptized and to do all of the other things that are required for salvation. This means that the person wants to fulfill God's will by becoming a Catholic, but the circumstances of their life prevent them from doing so. This is not a loophole for people who could have been baptized, but put it off until it was too late, or for people who don't believe baptism is necessary for salvation. The baptism of desire applies only to people who have the proper intentions, but just can't see them through physically. The baptism of blood is a little simpler. This is basically martyrdom for the faith. Even if you're not yet baptized, you will ascend immediately and directly into heaven with no waiting and no time in purgatory if you are martyred for the faith. This means being killed because you refuse to renounce your faith or to do something that the faith tells us is morally wrong. In fact, given its sheer certainty and the guarantee of salvation that this promises, we should probably all be on the lookout for authentic chances to be martyred. I mean, the early Christians did it all the time. Each of these baptisms is a real form of baptism, and it has the same effects as water baptism on the person's soul. However, once again, remember that the baptism of desire only works if water baptism can't be obtained. Next time, what's the deal with infant baptism? Can you really baptize someone who's too young to give their consent? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.